I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, here we're going to be testing these generic 18650 cells I recently harvested. For those who are new to this, these are the cells that came out of the um, battery from my HP laptop. It was a replacement I bought off of Amazon just a year ago. And I took it out of search because it was not performing very well. Well, it turns out two of the cells were bad. Um, at least they were holding a much lower voltage than the rest of the pack. It was an eight cell pack. And um, these were all holding about like 3.6 volts and the other two were holding only about two volts. So, curious to see what these things can do. This will be my first time testing them out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop in my uh, Opus BT uh, C3400 charger. It is this charger right here. I've had this charger for about three years now, and it's been a workhorse, I must say. I've modded it to accept 4.35 volt cells, which these cells here are standard 4.2 volt cells, by the way. And according to the labels, they're rated for 2200 milliamp hours, which is funny. Uh, the laptop battery that came out of claimed to be a, uh, a 5200 milliamp hour battery pack, which to get 5200 milliamp hours, you would have to have two 2600 milliamp hour cells in parallel. The pack actually had two of these in parallel, a total of eight pairs, so 4400 milliamp hours instead. So, anyways, enough of the talking. Let's go ahead and pop these things in the charger. So, what we'll be doing to start this out is go ahead and charge them up to 4.2 volts and then use the charger's discharge test to see how much capacity I pull out of them. I'm going to discharge them at one amp and see what kind of capacity I get. So these cells don't have that many cycles on them because they're not that old. I think they were actually manuf they were manufactured sometime in 2016, I do think. Yeah, very clean looking cells. They, uh, they seem to resemble LG chem cells, but they're not LGs. The vents are not exactly the same size and of course they're not LG chems. They're they're a they're probably they were probably made in China, which in the past the cells that I've used out of these replacement battery packs have have worked fine. Matter of fact, the camera I'm filming with right now is running off of two two uh, two cells that came out of a generic replacement laptop battery. So, anyways, again, I know I like to talk. Pop these in and. We'll let these charge up. So they're sitting again around 3.6 volts. I'm going to charge them at 1 amp like I usually do with my 18650s. So we'll let this sit and do its thing and see how much we can put into them. But again, the real test will be how much comes out. One thing I'll be checking on occasionally is the heat. Make sure these things don't get too hot. Because if they get hot, then Obviously, there's something wrong. Uh, lithium ion cells, it's normal for them to get a little warm when charging. But if they get hot enough to where you have to, have to like stick a fan on them to cool them off, that's usually not a very good thing. At least, that's how it is with this charger. So we're going to let these charge up and we'll continue on. Okay, so we've been charging for, let's see, hang on a second. About... hour and 12 minutes and we put in roughly 1100 milliamp hours into these and they started at like 3.6 volts the thing I'm really concerned with is these cells are getting quite hot yeah they're getting toasty um, which makes me believe they're not exactly good quality cells um, the last time I had issues with cells getting hot were when I um, I had some green Sanyo cells that were pulled from a Dell laptop battery a couple of years ago, um, I eventually had those recycled. Dell had to recall a bunch of their laptop batteries because of 
defects in the construction of the sails. Um, I think one of the problems was they would just. I know one of the issues they had was during manufacturing of the sails, there were some there was some metal particle contamination in some of the uh, electrolyte. But one thing I noticed is those um, those Sony cells, just out of random, would get extremely freaking hot uh, during the charging cycle. And also, uh, this has been an issue with Sanyo brand lithium-ion cells. De um, brands like, I think, Dell, um, HP, and other manufacturers had to recall a bunch of laptop batteries because of cells getting hot and overheating and in some cases, thermal runaway. So these cells right now, they're running at. You now this is kind of hard to get an accurate um, reading on this thing because the, I guess the shape of the cells. But we're we're pushing 46 degrees Celsius, and like I say, okay, the one on the right is pushing 50 degrees Celsius, which is in Fahrenheit over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And these cells are quite hot to the touch. Um, matter of fact, after a while, it starts to get uncomfortable to leave my hand on them. Yeah, so they're they're getting quite toasty, and it's abnormal compared to my other cells, even the other generic cells that I have. So I'm gonna place this fan on top of those to try to cool them down some. So this is what I'm running. As far as my 18650s, I have, see, all these, these two, and some others like them that are actually in use right now. They're all laptop battery harvests. These are LG Chem 2200 milliamp hours. These are generic 1900 milliamp hours. Just look at one of the generic cells. Now these I don't have any issues with getting hot. Neither do I have this had that issue with these, nor these, or these green cells. These green cells are Panasonic 3400 milliamp hours. These were not laptop harvests. These were actually bare cells that I had gotten about a couple years ago. Yeah, I don't have see I don't have that problem with these. And typically with laptop battery cells or lithium ion cells in general. Uh, when they get hot during charging, that's typically not a good. That's not a good sign of a healthy, of a healthy cell. Um, leads me to believe that the internal resistance of these cells could be quite high. Now this charger can read internal resistance. Um, I have to, I have to demonstrate that. And I'm not exactly sure what it's going to read, but with these things getting hot like that, I yeah, when they get hot, how much we have to have a fan blown across them. That right there, that alone takes away my trust in cells as being reliable. So the fact that two of the cells had gone bad in that HP um, generic replacement laptop battery, it leads me to believe that these are probably um, low quality cells. And it, I guess I could say it's to be expected with generics. You you have decent ones and you probably have garbage cells too. So, yeah, even if the even if these do charge up to their rated capacity, I'm probably not going to put them into service because, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that actually because I have a whole lot more uh, laptop batteries on hand that I could actually source from and get cells that are more reliable than these. So let's see how let's see how hot they are now that I've taken the fan off. This one here is down to like 42 degrees Celsius, but yeah, they were they were pushing over 50 degrees Celsius to begin with. Because I happened to walk through here and I decided to, to check the temperature of the cells, and I was like, man, yeah, they were they were toasty, I must say. So that's an update on that. Okay, everybody, here's another sign that these cells are probably just absolute crap. 
Um, as you saw from the previous uh, clip, these things were getting extremely hot. Meaning that a lot of power that was getting put into them by this charger was just getting wasted as heat. Um, if you look at the capacities here, or at least not the capacities, but the amount of power that's been put into these. You remember they were all sitting at about 3.6 volts when I started this. You can see how it ranges from 1475 to 2491. And if we go to display, you can see, well, if I hit display again, you see they've, um, this has been going for about two and a half hours now. This one's still taking 442 milliamps. This one's taking about 110. This one's taking 443. This one is taking 866 milliamps still. And they're already starting to. This one here is already starting to warm up quite a bit. Um, it's sitting at 4.13 volts. The rest of them are at 4.17. And I forgot to mention when I pulled these cells out of the laptop battery I've I've kept them in groups um, so these two were together in a group these two were getting in a group and these two were together in a group so yeah, as mentioned these these were paired together these were paired together and these other two were paired together so to see the um, the amount of power that's been put into these is varying so much. It's that's just unreal. Um, and you can see this one here is taking uh, 2,500 milliamp hours, which is way more than the capacity that's stamped on the cell. Meaning that a lot of the power that this charger has actually put in has been wasted as heat. Um, for lithium ion cells to get hot when charging is a sign of something not going too well with the cell. Um, now nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmiums, they they're a little different. Um, it's normal. It's pretty normal for them to get pretty toasty when charging. Um, once they get closer to their, once they get close to a full charge, a lot of times they will they'll um, disperse. The extra power is heat, um, whereas on lithium ion, these charge off of a constant voltage, a constant current, constant voltage charge cycle. So it starts out as constant current at let's say one amp, but as the battery cells get near 4.2 volts, the charge will start to de decrease the amount of current going into these uh, cells. Matter of fact. You can charge lithium ion cells off of a uh, lab power supply, a lab bench power supply that uses constant current, constant voltage. Um, I'll have to do a video of that sometime. Dem demonstrate that. It won't be here. It'll actually be at my place of work where we had those power supplies on hand. But um, yeah, this this cell here is getting quite toasty again. These three are just barely even warm, but this one's getting hot. So let me go ahead and do this. This one is at 46 degrees Celsius, whereas this one's at 40, 31, 38. So yeah, I'm I'm tempted to not even bother with doing the discharge test because these cells, I'm I'm thinking these cells are just junk, um, not worth wasting my time with. I'm thinking, really, to be honest, since we are close to 4.2 volts already, I'm thinking about just go ahead and stopping this. Because this one is really, you can see how it's still setting at 4.13 volts. It's not increasing, it's, it's just taking in power from the charger and dispersing it as heat like a resistor. Um, I'd say that's not very safe. Because with lithium ion batteries, you, you now in when they're actually in when they're in use in something, when they're powering something, lithium ion cells actually they they operate more efficient when they're pretty warm, but when you're charging them, 
and they get hot, that's, that can be dangerous because eventually, if they disperse enough heat, the cell could get hot enough to where it could go into thermal runaway and self-destruct. So, yeah. I'm going to actually go ahead and start taking these off. And man, this thing is hot. So this will be my first time actually getting generic cells that were not all that decent. Now mind you, this uh, this battery pack, the laptop battery pack, got off of Amazon last year for about twenty dollars. It has eight had eight cells in it. <clears throat> so yeah, eight cells. For twenty dollars, you kind of get the idea. Sometimes you're not going to get the greatest sales, but you know it's, it's interesting because in the past I've gotten decent quality um, generics when harvesting out of generic laptop batteries. So yeah, this will be the again. This will be my first time having some bad ones or some crappy ones. So when these cool down, I'm going to I'm going to pop them back on here and I'm going to run my fan across the charger. Just to play it safe and see what I can get out of these as far as discharge. And I'm pretty certain it's going to be less than what it put in. It may be a lot less depending on the cell. You know, like the one cell that put out, that took in 2,500 milliamp hours? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen similar, I've seen similar behavior from failing Nikomo hydride cells. Um, they would just sit there and, and charge and charge and charge and a lot of the power you put in gets wasted as heat. They would actually, they would, they would just behave like the little heaters. And then you go to, to load them on something and to actually, when you go to discharge them, you wouldn't get much of anything out of them. Because they just don't hold a charge. Much of what you put into them just gets wasted as heat. So, yeah, it's probably... It's probably no wonder why this battery pack failed. These cells are crap. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this fan in. And let it blow across these cells for a little bit. And cool them down. And, and when I start to do the discharge test, I'm going to monitor these things closely. Make sure they don't get too hot. Because, <laughs> yeah. I'm all, again, I'm almost tempted to not even bother with the discharge test, but I'm going to do it just to see what we get out of them. Okay, now that these things are at a reasonable temperature, now it's time to go ahead and see what we can get out of them. And load them in. Here's a neat observation. Look at what these things are holding at right now. Matter of fact, I'm just going to try to charge them. Let me just take my multimeter <clears throat> and measure them. As you may have seen, they were sitting at like close to 4.2. And the uh, heater on the far right was uh, sitting at like 4.13. Yeah, I don't, have a, I don't have a very good feeling about this. Four point oh seven. Now, I don't. I may have mixed up the order of these cells. I, I think I still have them in pairs, but like for example, I know the heater was on the far right on the when I had them in the charger last, but it could be over here for all I know now. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. I should have marked them or something, but four point oh seven. 4.01, 4.13, 4.07. So you notice how 
you know, one of these was, was holding at like 4.13 and the rest were like at 4.2 or close to that. If I remember right, um, you notice now they're sitting at almost the same voltage. That's just, yeah, that's not very good. Like, for example, let me grab one of my, let's grab this generic cell here. Let's see what it's holding at. I have no idea how long it's been sitting. Or it's probably been sitting for at least a week or so since I took it off the charger. It's holding at 4.14. And again, it's been sitting for quite some time. How about the other one? Four point one five. Okay. How about one of my L my blue LG cells? Now these came off the charger today. I charged them up earlier today before I started doing this video. Four point one six. It's pretty. I'd say it's pretty normal for them to to uh, to rest at about four point one four to four point one six, maybe even higher. Okay, how about one of my LG 4.3 fiber cells? Let's see what it's holding at. Yeah, it's holding at like 4.22, which is kind of interesting because I know I have 4.35 in it initially. Now, these cells here. They have a lot of cycles on them. I've used the crap out of them. Yeah, they're sitting at 4.23. So, yeah, um, those pink cells, they have a lot of cycles on them. So that's kind of to be expected that they're not holding as much. Um, those things probably have... <laughs> I don't know how many cycles they had when I first, before I actually harvested them. Okay, this Panasonic's holding at 4.17. It's they don't have that. The Panasonic's don't don't have all that many um, cycles on them. But those those pink LG cells. I don't know how many cycles they had on them when I harvested them, but I know for a fact I've used those cells. I've I've used them hard. <laughs> I've been using them pretty hard for the past two years. So it's kind of be expected that they're that they kind of lost a little bit but to see these cells performing the way they are is, is, is pitiful I must say now if they had like close I don't know 500 cycles on them or a lot of cycles on them if they were near the end of their usable service life I could I could I could see this kind of behavior out of them but the the heating up though that's yeah all right, so I'm sorry it were you know, five and a half minutes since I started this clip, but I just want to note these kind of observations because, I mean, this is crazy. So I'm going to pop them back in there. Make sure they're seated good. I'm going to change the mode. Discharge. Actually, first... Let's see what their internal resistance is. I hit the wrong thing. Quick test, that's what I was supposed to hit. <clears throat> Now, that, now, I will say that these numbers don't seem all that bad. Um, like, for example, let me pop in one of my... Let me use one of my Panasonics here as a reference. This is one of my Panasonics I use in my flashlights. I'm going to pull these out. Try to keep them in pairs.
see what one of these Panasonic cells gets me. It'll probably be higher for all I know. I actually know it was lower. Okay. Okay, how about one of my 1900 milliamp hour generics? Twenty-three. Okay, how about the blue LG cell? Two thirty. See, these are even higher, but they have, the, these cells are working fine. Now I'd have to I'd have to reference the manual for my charger because. I think that's a value of resistance that I'm getting. I'm not sure um, what value it is, but I think when they're like, I think when they're like fight when when these <laughs> when the, the quick test reports like a real high number, like I don't know, 500, then obviously something's wrong. But even though these are reporting the numbers they have, which I'm gonna pop them back in there, and do it again. I think you're supposed to do this on fully charged cells, by the way, if I remember right from the manual on this charger. So I'll let it do its little thing. Yeah, these numbers ain't that bad, but obviously the way the cells are behaving, you know, how they're wasting a lot of their power, the, the power that's being put into them is heat, and the fact that not even 15 minutes after taking them off the charger, they've done fallen back down to the voltages that they have. It's just not that, not, not all that great. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to discharge these things. See what we get out of them. And I'm going to place my fan right here. And keep some air going across them. Actually, what I should have done I'm going to discharge it at one amp as I said earlier in the video. But I'm going to keep an eye on these things. I'm going to check them pretty regularly make sure they're not getting too hot. Now the C rating on laptop cells is generally 2C, so that means the maximum that these theoretically should be able to provide would be 4.4 um, amps. These are not the same as the cells that come out of uh, drill batteries or vacuum cleaner batteries or the batteries that you use to uh, vape with. They should be able to. They should, however, be able to supply one amp just fine. So we'll see how they do. I'm not expecting anything real spectacular either. Okay, well, we're like a few minutes into this. Um, let's see here. Yeah, like four minutes in. It's charging all at one amp. Now, what's interesting is. Yeah, these are all, you know, this one here is the lowest one, 3.84 volts. These two over here are 3.88. This one here is 3.98. I'm going to assume this is this one here was probably the heater. Because, I mean, it sat there and it was getting more, it was getting more power from the charger throughout the whole thing. So it may have taken more charge than the rest of the cells, but, yeah. I think I see why that laptop battery was so unreliable. And probably why the fuel gauge on it, which was you know, part of the little control circuit board, you know, this guy here, I could probably see why I could never estimate um, remaining time, remaining time available on the pack, because uh, <laughs> these cells are just they're they're operating so freaking unreliable. Um, I imagine this little circuit had a heck of a time keeping them balanced too, because yeah. We well, saw how the if you if you watch the video where I tore the pack apart, um, you'll see how two of the cells were were 
were way out of balance compared to the others. I mean, the first six, the the, the, the six ones that were I thought I would, I thought were good. I guess I can say uh, the ones that were holding 3.6 volts, they were all pretty well balanced with each other. But the front two were just oh man, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, inter interesting. Not even like not even like six minutes in. This is what the voltage has fallen to, which I don't think it is exactly anything too abnormal, but yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm not a fan of these cells at all. Okay, so now we're 16 minutes in, and have a look at the voltages now. <laughs> yeah, they're getting more and more apart. Yeah, these cells are junk. Okay guys, we're 30 minutes into the discharge and things are not looking very good. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Still pulling one amp off of all four. Look at these voltages. <laughs> yeah. This one over here is pretty freaking bad. 3.32 volts already. But just 30 minutes in. 3.3 volts is around where uh, my camera is usually shut off for low battery. Matter of fact, my senior cameras tend to shut off at about like 3.5 or so. So, you're okay now. You wonder, okay, what, how much have we taken out? 500 milliamp hours. That is pitiful. Alright, let's keep going. Okay, they finished the charging. Let's have a look. So right now, zero milliamps being pulled from. Resting voltages vary from 3.65 to 3.71, almost the same as what they were holding when I harvested them. Yeah, that's that's pitiful. The best I got was 866 milliamp hours. And this was char this was discharging at one amp. Okay. Um, for example, these LG chem cells, I got roughly their rate of capacity out of them, discharging them at one amp. Same goes for these cells. So my charger, the way it's supposed to work, is it typically it typically runs them down to I think about three volts so yeah these cells are junk <laughs> they're garbage yeah I was hoping the fact that they were not that old and hadn't had that many cycles on them that they would be okay but apparently not <laughs> these things are junk so I will be recycling them and I'm not gonna waste my time with them they get extremely hot when you go to charge them. They don't hold much of anything. Yeah, that's that's pitiful. That's 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 awful. So yeah, um, this manufacturer apparently does not make decent quality cells. And one thing I should go ahead and mention as is, is that uh the um. The listing on Amazon for that laptop battery has since been pulled. It was pulled, I don't know exactly when it was pulled, but I, I do remember when I went to look up this battery pack on Amazon again, when I went into my orders and tried to click the link, yeah, Amazon gave me an error 404, essentially. Uh, the, the link, the listing has been taken down, the link was non active. <clears throat> the battery pack was sold under the GoMarty brand. <laughs> yeah, totally generic. So, yeah, these cells are junk. Um, and I'm gonna say though, I don't think it was a waste of time harvesting them because I got to, it was it did make for some decent um, educational footage for those who are pretty new to laptop batteries and curious how they fail. Well, this was pretty much a textbook example of how laptop batteries oftentimes fail. Typically, you'll have a group of cells go bad, but you'll still have others that are good. Well, 
D6 were holding 3.6 volts while the other two were sitting at 2 volts. Not sure why, but I mean, all these cells, they're, they're, they're crap. So, yeah, they're getting recycled. So I think it's pretty safe to say now that um, not all of these generic laptop battery packs out there have, have decent cells in them. And like I said in the past, I've harvested at least a several, um, I, I've, I've cracked open several generic laptop batteries and harvested the cells and the ones that were not dead as in like being sitting at like zero volts were typically pretty good. I'm talking about those, like these generics up here, and also the uh, purple ones that I harvested in 2017 for use in power banks that I have. I mean, those things work fabulous, but these, junk, absolute junk. Okay, I forgot to do this in the previous video clip, but I figured I'd do it now. Um, in case you guys are wondering how much these weigh. These cells weigh in at about 44 grams, which is pretty respectable for the type of cell that it is. We'll compare that with an LG 2200 milliamp hour cell. The LG cell is actually a little less. Now wait, this generic cell, this is a 1900 milliamp hour. So about 41 and a quarter grams. So these cells do have reasonable weight. It's just they're just not that good of quality, um, as you have seen in the previous video clips where when you try when you go to charge them, they just waste most of what you put in um, as heat. So I'm going to be recycling these cells. I'm not going to bother wasting my time with them because I have, again, if I hadn't mentioned already, I have other battery packs that I can harvest from and that would yield me better quality cells. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeComp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you for your support.